This is uh, another live look right now from Brookdale Hospital. A dignified transfer is about to begin for the late NYPD officer, Adid Fayaz. He passed away. He was shot a couple of days ago in Brooklyn, off duty, going to hopefully buy a car. He was with his brother-in-law. They met up with someone through Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, he's 26 years old. He's a father, uh, off duty at the time, and only on the job for a few years. This is always a very dignified ceremony. What's going to happen here is that the body will be taken out of Brookdale Hospital, and then it will be moved to the medical examiner's office. Stay with us here on CBS News New York, our streaming channel. Uh, we will stay right here and continue with this dignified transfer of the remains of Officer Fayaz. Yes, the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell is next. Good evening, and uh, we are talking breaking news now um, as we are looking from Chopper 2 down into an entrance of Brookdale Hospital where we learned within the hour that NYPD officer Adid Fayez, 26 years old, married father of two, passed away. He was shot in a robbery, uh, gone bad. He was off duty. That happened over the weekend, and we've learned he passed away. And what a turnout in this, this solemn tradition of the police department. Yeah, the police department turning out by the thousands, as they often do. Um, the officer was shot in East New York, as we reported. Uh, he held on for a couple of days. Um, but the injuries were just too grave. Now, what we're going to be watching in a few minutes is what they call the dignified transfer of his body. It will leave Brookdale Hospital, and then it will take to the streets and be driven to the medical examiner. And that could take some time. But all along the way, you will see tributes to this officer. Uh, he was off duty at the time, but as we say, with policing, you're never off duty. <laughs> the risk is always there, and obviously, this is such a difficult time for mm. his family. CBS 2's Ali Bauman is outside the hospital. Ali, and what can you tell us more about the mood there and what will happen? Well, Dana and Dick, right now there are hundreds of NYPD officers that are here behind me outside Brookdale Hospital where they're waiting for that dignified transfer to happen in just a few minutes. Now I'm talking a little bit hush because even though it is outside, it, it, you know, we're, that we are in, in Brooklyn here, there it's very quiet. Everyone is really just standing here silently. You have a lot of media here, but a lot of NYPD officers just solemn and silent and waiting for this dignified transfer to happen for the body to be taken out. Out of Brookdale Hospital. Now, here they have, we are expecting the family of that officer, of 26 year old officer Adid Fayaz, who is going to be coming out of the hospital with his body. And so it'll be a hush scene here as everyone pays their respects and transfer his body to the medical examiner's office, as you said. Now, we know that the 26 year old officer, he had been in grave condition since he was rushed here just three days ago. And it was around 3 p.m. this afternoon that he did succumb to his injuries and pass away. And everyone from the police commissioner, of course, everyone through the NYPD is offering their condolences here. And again, it's supposed to be happening in just a few minutes behind me. I'm just checking back here to see if it is happening yet. I know that we have video from the chopper up ahead and you can see that more people are gathering. It's been for the past hour and a half or so. There's just been a rush of NYPD officers gathering and coming here and making sure that they're showing their respects for their brother and blue to see that this is happening. So again, we're here on the scene and we'll be watching this as that dignified transfer to the medical examiner's office occurs. So for now, we're live outside Brookdale Hospital. I'll send it back to you. And Ali, thank you. This is just going to be the beginning of the next few days in the morning of this officer um, who died of his injuries. And, you know, it's something that the NYPD does so well. They honor these men and women who do so much for the city of New York. And in this case, um, they have captured a suspect in the case. And uh, he is being held in what's being called a robbery gone wrong. He's going to be charged with probably now the he was attempted murder, but obviously the charges will go up to murder, presumably, um, assuming that that's what they're going to do next. Uh, he's identified as Randy Popper Jones, and um, police arrested him in a Rockland County hotel. Yeah, 50 miles away.
a couple days later, he was arrested um, Monday. And uh, it, it, let's now we have another picture here, Dick. There's a there is a photograph yeah. of of the officer, Adid Fayaz, and um, going with his brother-in-law to buy a car was what police tell us through you know a meeting you know it, it's on the whole Facebook uh, marketplace thinking okay okay and when you how see many of us have done that and these situations that these officers are put in and the, the situations always vary uh, frequently they carry a weapon with them because that's their job to be on the job all mm -hmm. the time and there's always that tricky situation for an officer to know when he can go for his gun or when he could go for his gun will it make the situation worse will it stop the person mm -hmm. but that's their job that they have to do the really difficult stuff life and death situations and not always ones that are readily apparent that is the best situation and in this case of course it ended tragically but we do see again and again and again officers who just decide, you know, this is what I've chosen. We hear it so much from the officers and their families. And in situations like this, you hear them say, you know, uh, he gave his life, but that's what he wanted to do. That's what he wanted to be. This is, this is not a job. And if you've been with anyone on the NYPD, uh, it's a calling. It's always a calling. Mm -hmm. These are people who frequently come from families mm -hmm. of NYPD officers, mm -hmm. and they say the same thing. And that's why they understand when they turn out in these thousands, because they all say to themselves, this is what I face every day. And uh, to be there, to be supportive, when you have a young family, he's a young father, uh, it's just devastating. And then his parents, you can only imagine what they're going through right now. To it's see just, your child die before you. It's just, it's the parents' worst agony imaginable. And um, this ceremony is just a beautiful ceremony and it's something that's gotten more prominent over the last few years. The coverage has gotten more prominent and for good reason because these men and women on the NYPD, and really not just the NYPD, but on these law enforcement mm -hmm. agencies all around the country, every day they don't know what they're going to be facing. And their family doesn't know. And their family doesn't know. Doesn't know. And on this uh, particular, the police saying that when he and his brother-in-law arrived, uh, you know, met the suspect, that the suspect, police say, jokingly asked, if they were armed, they said no, at which point police say the suspect put Fayez in a headlock. He broke free, but the suspect, police say, shot him in the head. The brother-in-law, police say, got the gun. Got Fias the gun, gun, right. And, and fire, returned fire six times. Again, the, uh, um, the suspect is in custody. And uh, I don't know if you heard the press conference with the chief of detectives talking about putting Officer Fayez's handcuffs on the suspect. It appears now that perhaps the procession is beginning. Yes. Uh, uh, let's just stay on the ground here for now and see. There's Commissioner Sewell. There's Commissioner Sewell leading the way out. And uh, Dan Rice, you're in the chopper above. What can you see from there? I don't know if Dan can hear me. That's Commissioner Sewell coming out, so very shortly this procession will begin. Okay, hey Dan, um, I know you're above this procession. What are you seeing right now? Well, as you and Dana were talking about, it's this sea of blue down here that just tugs at the heartstrings. You see all these officers out here, but it's also the FDNY and the EMS out here as well. All three uh, services come together in moments like this. And you see how they come out here and support each other and are there for each other in these tough times. And it's just, it's always an emotional uh, event down here that you see such uh, camaraderie among all of these officers and firefighters and emergency service workers. Because as you said, all of them know any one of them could be in this position at some point in their lives. And to have this type of support means the world to each one of these members of uh, service that are down here uh, waiting to say their uh, final goodbyes uh, to Officer Fayez as he comes out here to the, uh, to the ambulance to see waiting on the left-hand side of your screen. And, of course, we did see uh, the dignitaries come out of the hospital, which would indicate that more than likely, uh, sooner than later, we will see uh, them bring the body of Officer Fayez out of the hospital and over to that awaiting ambulance. Uh, Dan, if you can see, I would imagine that there is a, uh, the roads have been stopped, have been blocked off for the procession. Is that what you're seeing in the immediate area? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so this hospital sits at the corner of Rockaway Parkway and uh, Linden Boulevard. And Rockaway Parkway, for about the past hour, uh, has been closed down as the uh, officers and the other members of the service have arrived at the scene. I would show you that, but it looks to me like at this point, they are getting ready to bring the uh, officer out of the hospital. We see the uh, officers in their dress blues there with the white gloves uh, standing next to the door. And as a matter of fact, the gentleman, the blue jacket, the people in the blue jackets on the left are getting ready to stand out of attention. So it would appear any moment now they should be bringing Officer Paez out of the hospital. This has been a devastating time for the family because when the officer was shot, um, he was still alive. And yet uh, at one point, Mayor Adams said the family has a difficult decision to make. Um, because of the graveness of his injuries. So it's just been an absolutely devastating, uh, awful situation for this family. And um, to lose a man like this, it was obviously someone who was serving his city. And let's listen in if we can. So we have seen the transfer from inside Brookdale Hospital. Now the remains of that officer there dedicated to the city of New York, 26-year-old Adid Vaez, being put into a police uh, vehicle to be transferred to the medical examiner's office. And such a show of support there. And watching the body go by, it just, it, it just brings me to This is the family right here. can only imagine how devastating it is for them right now. We saw that um, the officer's remains were wrapped in what appeared to be a flag. A flag. And um, it looked like the United Arab Emirates flag. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but we do know and we look at this grief and we share your grief, family. We share your grief and we're so sorry. And it's just so brave of them to be standing out there right now. Just to stand there can be so difficult. And very shortly, that NYPD ambulance will begin a procession which will lead to the medical examiner's office. And um, if you've seen these before, you will see that the streets are blocked all along the way in honor of this officer and the life he gave for the city. See, the ambulance is just about starting to move. Mm -hmm. And as we watch this, you know, we once again reiterate just how dangerous a profession this is. And once again, that this officer was off duty. He was off duty and nonetheless, mm -hmm. he was still put in harm's way. Still in harm's way and, and with his brother-in-law right. out looking at a Honda, thinking that that's what they were about to do and to make a purchase possibly, but definitely meeting someone to look. Here now another picture on the ground of Officer Adid Faez's family, a young husband and father of two children being led into a vehicle. They will join the procession, which will take any number of minutes to cross the city streets. I see it's pretty slow getting out of there right now, so this could take some time, um, in which case, as we said, the body will be taken to the medical examiner's office. Um, obviously, at this very brief time, he was just pronounced dead. There are no funeral arrangements. That could come in the next couple of days. This looks like a hospital also employees there. You know, it's, it's all of us. I mean, it's hard to watch these people who try to save lives in that hospital. It's difficult for them, too. There's so many people who are affected by this. 
from now in just a couple of minutes, we believe the procession will begin. It's hard to see right now, but obviously there might be a little traffic there that's blocking things. In a helicopter, do you, you can hear us, yes? You're with us? Dan Rice. Dan? Yeah, I got you, Dana. So uh, I know that Dick asked this earlier, um, but I was wondering as things start to move, do you see a, a, a route that's seemingly mapped out or? At, at the moment, I don't see the route. Uh, I'll be honest with you, my camera's facing towards the back of the helicopter, so Understood. I can't see in front of me. But uh, what typically happens is, unfortunately, we've seen this before, they will use the, the local streets in Brooklyn, more than likely will make their way over towards the Gowanus BQE, uh, possibly go in the Midtown Tunnel, or uh, not the Midtown Tunnel, I'm sorry, the Battery Tunnel. And uh, they will go up to probably the east side to, uh, to uh, the medical examiner's office on 30th Street. Mm -hmm. And the scene that you'll see there will be similar to what you're seeing here. Because typically when they arrive with the ambulance, and it's always that specially marked NYPD ambulance right there, uh, there will be more police officers awaiting his arrival to salute him as they bring him to the medical examiner's office. And as Dick had been saying, along the way, more than likely, the FDNY will have tributes all along the route uh, saluting this officer as he's being brought into Manhattan. Thank you. Just to reiterate, 26-year-old uh, Adit Fayez, he died within the last couple of hours. He had been fighting for his life at Brookdale Hospital. This happened when he was off duty in a shooting. It was at a Facebook marketplace where he was apparently trying to buy a car. Um, and he came upon what apparently was a, a, a guy who was up to no good. And the, the perpetrator, according to the police, uh, said, hey, um, you got, uh, use guy's arm, which is literally what the de chief of detective said. And uh, they were, at least uh, Officer Baez was. Uh, unfortunately, though, he wound up being shot in the head. His brother, who was with him, tried to take his gun, and his brother-in-law, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, at which time this man fired and struck Officer Baez in the head. Um, it's just a terrible situation right now. Um, and now we're beginning to see a wider picture that Dan Rice was talking about where they have to go, because it could be quite some time. We are still in rush hour here in the afternoon, and we know how traffic moves very slowly, especially on those side streets mm -hmm. over by Brookdale Hospital. Mm -hmm. And they have a long way to go from Brookdale all the way across the borough of Brooklyn. So they will be moving probably slowly. And now for the NYPD, it just becomes another time of mourning uh, for this officer. All those uh, members of the top brass of the city of New York. I think I see Pat Lynch there, the chairman of the PBA, yeah. the president of the PBA. Mm -hmm. Always an outspoken person in defense of um, his officers and then the many others who are lined up there. Um, this is just, it's always an extremely tragic moment to be standing there and witness a young person's life be taken and then an entire family's life being crushed. Forever. And there's only so much you can do to support them because the pain will last year after year after year. And it's just heartbreaking to see those little kids who won't see their father. And you know the, the family support within the department. Uh, I mean, sadly, it's extraordinary. as within the fire department, an organization of, of widows and, and children who've lost their parents, um, who wear the uniforms, who serve in the finest and the bravest and support each other um, through life and death. You know, they call it a paramilitary force. You, know, have, you literally have tens of thousands of officers on the NYPD and um, they go out there every day and they don't know what they're going to face. And in this case, this officer was not even on duty. So he's always put, they're always put in a position where they're more or less on duty and they are allowed obviously to carry a weapon. And in this case, he wasn't able to use it to defend himself. And there's, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this over the next couple of days. This is from uh, Commissioner Sewell, who just uh, tweeted this. Police officer Adid Fayaz was a father, a husband, a son, and a protector of our great city. Officer Fayaz was shot Saturday night, and he tragically succumbed to his injuries today. Our department deeply mourns his passing, and his family and loved ones are in our prayers. That tweet from the commissioner of the New York City Police Department. Let's see if we can, uh, if Dan Rice can hear us. I'm just wondering what the process, uh, the procession. Well, there's the procession, Dan. Uh, what are you seeing? Anything more than we're seeing right here? 
Uh, at the moment, Dick, no. What you're looking at, obviously, you have the, well, the police officer on the motorcycles moving in. Uh, what they'll do is they'll use those motorcycles to clear intersections. You have the lead police car, that ambulance right there. That is the one that has uh, Officer Fayez's body in uh, the back of that, and then we'll bring the camera out here. And what you'll see is that long procession of dignitaries, of family members, that stretches back towards the hospital. Uh, and you can see back over there that and I don't, like I said, I can't see the round specifically from here yet, mm -hmm. uh, but they'll work their way over towards the Gowanus in that way. We know that sometimes, and this can be on the day of the funeral, uh, they, they go by the officer, the firefighters, precinct, firehouse. Um, I and then frequently know. his home, yeah. Yeah, or Which home. is an old tradition oh, yes. from way back. Oh. Yeah, finally I mean, we see now the procession is moving. You can see there's uh, police vehicles, police motorcycles uh, surrounding. Go ahead, five minutes, Robbie. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Dick, I was talking to our desk as well. That's um, okay, go ahead. Yeah, you're talking about the firefighters. Uh, they will line the route, because like I said, they should probably go the Gowanus Expressway uh, and those major highways, and you will see uh, the fire trucks out there with their uh, ladders up with flags on them, and every member of that unit will be at attention as the ambulance goes by. And needless to say that people in the area should be aware um, that there may be some delays in the immediate area as the procession goes by. How long, it's hard to see from here, Dan, because we're not where you are. Uh, how long is the procession? Uh, that's a good question, Dick. Let me bring the camera out here. You can see they're making a turn around the other side of the hospital, and it, it's probably about a half a block long, it looks oh, like. Oh, yeah, it's, they, uh, it's, it's not as long as we, yeah. So, yeah, they'll catch up to them. Looks like they're going back towards Linden Boulevard. That's the hospital right there. And, of course, you can see... It appears to me what they've done is they've uh, blocked off the westbound side of Linden Boulevard, mm -hmm. and they'll probably use that. Uh, thank you. Just stand by there with us, Dan, Ali Bauman. Let's get back to you on the ground to tell us what you see. Well, Dana, the dignified transfer just wrapped up here at Brookdale Hospital. And of course, the body of NYPD officer Adit Fayaz is now being transferred to the medical examiner's office. But you can see behind me officers here. There are hundreds of officers here. They're now starting to disperse, consoling each other, talking to each other. Now we saw that during the dignified transfer, the family of that fallen officer was out here. He leaves behind a wife and two young children. They were standing right in front of the hospital, hugging each other, of course, and, and consoling each other. We saw several other people who, who seemed to be family members as well that were with the, the, the widow now and, and two children who were left behind walking with the, the rest of the, uh, the family that's been here, and as well as high-ranking NYPD officers. We've seen the uh, NYPD commissioner, Keishant Sewell, was here as well uh, to await the, the body as it came out of the hospital. Now, of course, many of the officers are going to the 7-5 precinct where the suspect is in custody and being questioned. Uh, it is unclear at this hour if he has officially been charged, though. But again, the body of that officer, of 26-year-old NYPD officer Adit Fayez, now on its way to the medical examiner's office. It appears to be moving much more quickly than it was mm -hmm. before because now it, it takes a while, and I think Dan Rice was just describing, and Ali, you certainly know this from seeing these before, is that it takes a while for the other police vehicles to get ahead of the game, so to speak, block off those roads. Uh, Ali, you know, just a few minutes ago, we saw the family. I don't know if you were able to see the family as we were standing there, but just the feeling of seeing that body go past, it, it was emotional for us to watch from here. I can only imagine what it must have been like for his family, for his wife, to his small children to have seen something like, like that. Um, I mean, the feeling there must have been overwhelming. Absolutely. And, uh, and as you saw, I mean, two young children, two uh, adorable young children who were there with their mother, their, their mother who's now, now a widow. And there were people here hugging, crying. You could hear people crying as the body was being taken out. And it was just, it was just a heartbreaking scene. Yeah, and we're just watching some of the officers who mm -hmm. are there on the scene. Uh, mm -hmm. These are some big, tough guys, and uh, you can see the tears. You can see they're wiping away the tears as, mm -hmm. as we look at this right now. Mm -hmm. Allie, uh, do you get the sense that now that pack of, well, there must have been, a, I guess, over a thousand people there, perhaps. It's hard to say from just looking from the air, but is that group now dispersing? What are you seeing right now on the ground? That group is 
Dig, they, yeah, that group is now dispersing. Many of these officers are now going to be making their way to the 7-5 precinct where the suspect is in custody there. Uh, but at this point, the, the uniformed officers here are now starting to disperse, but also, you know, dispersing from the official state, you know, position that they were in as the body was being taken out, but still lingering around many of them talking and, and just kind of being with one another in, in what's just a very uh, sobering moment. Yeah, and a sobering moment because uh, these people work so closely together and they're defending each other and the bonds that are created in the NYPD and the FDNY between the men, between the women, uh, just how close they can develop, whether you're working in a patrol car, whether you're working in a fire truck, there are deep emotional bonds and when something like this happens, the entire department feels it. That's the it's way it a is. loss of not only uh, brethren, sister, brother, they, them. I mean, it is a loss of, I don't know, the fabric of our city. Also, uh, you know, I'm sure the, the re examining of what they do, and I hope they understand how much we care and respect them and mourn with them, all of us. And, and it's sad to know that. Officer Fire is, is just a five year veteran of the force. Uh, he worked at the 66th Precinct, and um, as we said before, he was responding to an ad for a car on Facebook. It seems like the most incidental thing imaginable when you think about what this guy must do every other day when he's been out on the job. Real situations. Sure. Terrible. This is why everything happens so quickly. And, and, and if you've ever talked to these officers who've gone through this before, they'll say it always happens in almost a split second. A split second. $42,000 car, Honda Civic, Jeez. he and his brother-in-law going there, and uh, again, the chief of detectives telling us that the suspect asked jokingly if the two men had a gun, and they said no, and police saying the suspect pulled out a gun, uh, and then there was some bit of wrestling there between Officer Fias and the suspect, who was then... The officer shot in the head and has remained in grave condition until late today. And there it is, the dignified transfer continuing. Uh, the body of the officer will be now taken to the medical examiner's office, and, but they have a ways to go to traverse Brooklyn before they get there. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the streets have been closed, as you can see along the way, some of the streets have been blocked, so that will move it a little more quickly, but um, it is just, um, it is a mournful time in the NYPD and really a mournful time for the city. Hearts are heavy. The black car you see behind, I believe that's it. Uh, the family we saw, Dick. Um, that's right. It was like sort of a black family. One of those, those there, bigger yeah. SUVs. I'm not sure which of those, but the family. Uh, the governor of New York, this is what she has tweeted. I joined the people of New York at the New York City Police Department and the friends and loved ones of Officer Adid Fayaz in mourning the, this devastating loss. And it will take probably another 15, 20 minutes before these vehicles can reach that medical examiner's office. Um, and as we said before, you know, this is something that has been happening, but it's getting more coverage and it's, it's just another tribute. Mm -hmm. It's another tribute in a few days of tributes, tributes that we're gonna see in the city of New York in a department which really takes care of their own, especially in awful times like now, when you see a family like that. And again, a suspect is in custody, arrested in Nanuet, New York, is in custody, facing, well, charges more than he was earlier today. Thank you. Uh, we will continue to cover this dignified transfer of the remains of Officer Fayez and have more here on our streaming channel, CBS News New York. Also on our website, cbsnewyork.com. We mourn with the NYPD.